Hello, welcome back to the shop. Uh, this week, I've got a pretty good lineup. Uh, we're going to go over uh, another uh, e-ink uh, note-taking tip. So hopefully that you'll find that helpful. We're also going to go over another post of the week that I found particularly interesting. And to close it out, we're going to go over my top five technologies uh, since the release of e-ink itself that have advanced the technology. So it should be a fun episode. Uh, just one request, if you could, please uh, subscribe and, and like the video. And uh, with any further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, we're going to do another tip of the week. And this time we're going to focus on the super note. I'll be sharing my screen in just a second. But before we do, for people that may not be familiar with how the super note works, there is a line on the device. It's unique to the device. It's right here on the side. And when you swipe down, that will reveal the system tray that we'll be seeing uh, in the demonstration. And when you swipe up, it refreshes the screen. So just wanted to orient folks that may not be as familiar with the super note. Um, just a quick tangent on that. This uh, swipe down this line is I wouldn't call it a killer feature, but it's something that I appreciate. And it's uh, a nice way of being able to it integrates well into a workflow. Um, so it is kind of a nice feature uh, if you've never experienced the super note before, but it's it's by no means uh, critical in terms of any note taking experience, just a nice touch. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and go into the demonstration. So what this is a demonstration about is how you can put shortcuts in the super note to get to your um, workbooks quickly. Now, if you're like me, I have a lot of different workbooks. I have them all set up in different files and folders, um, but there's a handful of workbooks which are really critical I use every day, and I can't always guarantee that they're gonna be in my most recent notes list, but I want quick access to them. So the SuperNote actually has that ability to kind of pin certain notes into the system tray and I'll just show that now. So you can see I've just swiped down on that line that we talked about just a few seconds ago and there's a, a button there for recent files um, and there's some other buttons but I want to focus your attention to the quick access table and this is where you can take any note that you want and you can put it on and pin it into this section for easy reference. And there's actually two ways of pinning um, that are useful and we'll walk through both of those. So the first way to do it is I'm here inside the notebook itself and I just want to pin this notebook. So I'm going to go ahead and let me use the laser pointer feature. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this ellipse here. I'll do that. And then a menu will come down and if we go down here to this quick access section, you see there's two options. We can either quick access the current page or we can quick access the note itself. So we're, we'll, start, we'll do both, but we'll start with the note and I'll click on add. So now when I pull down my system tray, uh, we can see the notebook right here. And I just clicked to come back. Let's also go to a specific page. And I'm gonna go ahead and swipe so we're on the Let's see, the third page. And we'll again, we're gonna go into this ellipse and here's the menu. And now instead of adding the current note, I'm gonna add the current page, like so. And let's bring up the tray. And you can see that the notebook appears twice now. One time it appears with just the name of the notebook. And the second time, the time on top, it appears with the uh, parentheses number three. So the three indicates the page that I've pinned. So every time I select this item, it will take me to the third page of the notebook. Um, if I select this item, it will take me to whatever the last page was that um, I left the notebook. So we'll go ahead and click on that. It's, it's going to take me here. Let me go ahead and go to page five and we'll do the 
quick access and we're going to click on the we want to go back to the third page and it will take me right there or if I go to the fifth page bring down the bar and then just click on the note it returns you back to where it left off so a really nice feature for the super note um, generally speaking I don't uh, bookmark a particular page because I'll start my notebook and obviously each additional page is the most recent notes so I'm usually wanting to go to the last page of the the workbook um, or the notebook rather so I, I don't normally pinpoint a specific page but maybe sometimes you always want to return to the first page of a notebook or there's a particular page that's kind of the center of your notebook somehow and that's where the specific page number uh, would come in handy the only last thing I will share with this tip is if we go ahead and click on that ellipse again then at any time we can come down and uh, remove the quick link so I'll go ahead and remove it for the note you'll notice that it didn't have the remove option for the page because I'm on the fifth page so I'd have to swipe over to the third page click on the ellipse like so and now I have the ability to remove that from my quick list and as we can see both of them now are gone and that is your tip of the week so now it's time for our post of the week and this is where I'm going scouring the internet uh, usually reddit uh, because that's where most of the conversation about e-ink devices is being had but it doesn't have to be limited to reddit uh, in this particular case I am pulling from that source and I'm looking for conversations or dialogues I think are interesting and I found one uh, this week this comes off the e-ink channel and it was posted by Fabio TM uh, the title is e-ink less addictive than regular display hi I'm trying to remove the, the dependence from smartphone in my life. Until now, I was able to remove notification dependency in social media, except YouTube. But I recognize that during boring time, like loading screens at work, little breaks in the evening, or waiting for something IRL, I find myself focusing on navigating the web on my smartphone, losing the sense of time and focus of what I was doing as well. I think that going with a device that does not have full bright colors and smooth animations could decrease the power that this device has to distract me. But before spending money, I would like to read the experience of who already used this, uses this technology. Can you confirm my theory? Thanks in advance. Now what I find fascinating about this post, although this is a little more specific uh, than I usually see, uh, because he's really or, or this, this poster rather is really referring to their their phone and should they switch from a normal phone to an e-ink phone um, it really riffs off of a common refrain that you'll see uh, when people talk about e-ink devices um, the remarkable is a great example of this where you'll see the phrase distraction free um, this is a phrase that I don't relate to at all now, when I say that, I'm not being critical of people who are, are using that phrase. I believe in the sincerity of folks that, that use that. Um, I'm just saying that on a personal basis, I don't understand it. And partly what I struggle with is I understand the concept of distraction-free, but any device, it would seem to me, could be made distraction-free um, if you turn off notifications, you turn off sounds, etc. Um, and even if I had a distraction-free device, let's say I'm using a tablet, for example, you know, aren't, don't I have my phone with me as well? I, I, would, I would think I would. And, and so that's where I don't truly understand the idea of a device being distraction-free because the ultimate distraction is ourselves. It's our tendency to want to move away from whatever it is that we're doing uh, to something else that's grabbing our attention. So that's the piece that I, I kind of don't um, relate to. And so I'm curious about this post because I'm curious about what other people say. And obviously they'll, they'll come in with a very different perspective than I have, which is great. Um, so let's go ahead and find out what other posters have said uh, in response to this post. 
my my first reaction before we just before we do that is I, I I'm again I'm dubious that the answer is the device itself that it's more about I hate to use the phrase self-discipline because a lot of things on phones and we'll see this in the postings I think people uh, are fairly ar well articulate about this are designed to grab your attention I mean it's not a failing that that we are distracted by the technology around us because a lot of it was designed and engineered for that purpose um so it, but, but to me the answer is more in identifying techniques to try to cope with that um and that's kind of how i would i would phrase it i would phrase it not looking for a device but looking for a way to um to be able to handle these types of situations in a in a more effective manner that's just one perspective. Let's see what other people, probably smarter than I, have to say about it. So here's our first reply, and this particular poster um, suggests trying turning the phone to black and white. Uh, I guess the theory being it's, it's that the color is a major element of the distraction. Um, but then this poster also refers to the Hisense A9, which I believe is a smartphone with an e-ink screen, and they're, um, they appreciate that uh, using the e-ink screen. So kind of two recommendations there. And then the original poster replied you know, that they already did, but uh, and they have a setting, I guess, uh, to turn their phone to black and white. But then they go in and, and change the settings, uh, this, the poster does. And that's exactly what I was talking about in my response initially is I don't think it's necessarily the device where the answer to the issue lies. Let's see what other posters have said. Uh, this is Magic the Blathering. Awesome name. Uh, phone addiction is about apps being optimized to make you want to log on, for sure. E-Ink won't change that unless you don't install those apps, so that's one technique. If you're trying to break an addiction to sugar, for example, you don't buy worse tasting sugar, you throw away the sugar in your house. Meaning you, you completely, what he's saying is you can, or this poster is saying is you completely eliminate the potential for distraction. Um, try deleting the apps on your phone that you feel you might be addicted to and notifications a, a start, but probably not enough. And then the original poster responds, I think you're right. Uh, before answering you, I've seen my digital well-being statistic. That's interesting. I'm wondering what that is and how it's being tracked. Um, I guess it's just something that records how he's using his, his device. Um, spend the majority of time on Telegram or videos on YouTube. I should install those. And then uh, and then Magic the Blathering replies, good luck. I hope it works out for you, which I really want to highlight. I know that's a very innocuous statement, but it is so symbolic of Reddit. I think Reddit is one of the most amazing forums on the internet. Not everything's great, obviously, but you have so many people legitimately trying to help others. Um, and so that that calling out Magic the Blathering for um, just expressing what I think a lot of us want to do, which is to help each other. So uh, kudos. Let's go on. And uh, this is Nubahoy. Oh my god, these names are great. For understanding the addictive mechanism of social media and mobile phones, you should look into the book Hooked, How to Build Habit-Forming Products from Nur Isle. I have not heard of this book, but this, again, kind of ties to what I'm thinking, which is it's about finding techniques to cope. I do read a lot with my ebook devices, so I don't know about it for addiction reduction. The slower screen might help you with that, but newer e-ink tablets like the Tab X Ultra are fast enough for most games and even for YouTube you might want to look into your addiction in general. Um, and this is an, uh, one of the things that actually, when I read the post initially, I was first focusing, I didn't catch that the poster was talking about uh, the phone in particular. And so I was thinking maybe they were talking about, you know, taking devices. And so you see some posters will respond to the phone aspect and some will respond to you note know, taking devices as was the case here. Flower Town Man replies, if you still want a device you can use to mitigate the boredom, but not completely get sucked in, a smaller e-ink tablet or e-reader might be helpful if you treat it just as a book. You can have a bunch of books in the device, but I find it actually trying to just read stuff and not scroll the net or look up videos that take some concentration and focus. In other words, it's a more mindful, boring activity that doesn't give you the jingle keys attention grabbing. It's also 
going to be um, not as quick to back out of one book and go into another, so it's less tempting to just flick through your whole archive of content. And then the person goes on to give some recommendations. Flamingo1836, I bought a books device a couple years ago with the same goal. It didn't work. It was more frustrating than my phone and iPad, but not less addictive. If you're serious about the changes you want, read a book called Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. Have your mind blown and follow his advice. So another another reference. Again, I'm, I don't know this particular book, but it, it, that kind of is along the lines that I was thinking as well. Warren the Warren replies, So I wouldn't say that I had a smartphone addiction, but I will say that I'm much less inclined to sit and stare at my phone for long periods of time now that I have an A9. A lot of apps will work uh, enough to get information, but they just aren't enjoyable. Even more than that, there's apps that don't work at all. There's something more than just a screen being black and white. The experience itself is qualitatively different and less rewarding, or addicting, I think is, is another way to phrase it. That being said, if it is an addiction issue, you have to be mindful that you aren't just transitioning the same habits over to a laptop instead. So it's really interesting. We're seeing kind of a dichotomy in responses. We're seeing some responses that kind of align to what I was thinking, but we're seeing other responses that say, well, actually, maybe the device does make a difference. So very interesting. Uh, Prenzelberg replies, I never use social media apps on my ink devices. They just don't work well without smooth video and a fast refresh rate display. So yes, if you try to stay more focused on boring tasks, it can help to only use e-ink devices. So another vote that perhaps the device would be a, a factor. Uh, and Wombat McGee says, your theory is correct. I have an e-ink tablet and phone as well as an iPhone and iPad, and it's way easier not to get sucked into those e-ink devices. So really interesting, very much um, two general camps forming. And um, it'll be interesting to see what this particular poster uh, ends up going with. A couple more posts and we'll wrap it up. Uh, Mort Stoheit, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I just butchered that, I'm sure, replies, depends, regarding social media, binge watching, and so on, it's easier to avoid with a separate reading device if you manage to ignore the notifications on your phone. Regarding getting a loss in a book, the risk is higher, so there's less eye strain. Okay. And then finally, uh, Spiansky, or maybe Spiansky, not sure. I bought an e-ink Hisense A9 a month ago. I struggled with my addiction for circa 10 years. No, Now it seems to be going, I'm sorry, now I'm, I'm butchering that, I'm so sorry. Now it seems to be gone or hiding, but that's good enough. The e-ink screen was crucial. Funny cat videos, memes, and pictures of friends are no longer enticing. My brain just stopped sending me the urge to click on one of the colorful icons which promise a dopamine boost. Equally important is the fact that I now have a fantastic e-reader in my pocket, and whenever I'm bored, in a queue, etc., I just reach for an e-book. Reading on a smartphone screen wasn't that cool, and usually lost against the urge to stop reading and check one last thing on Facebook. An e-reader has never been something I carried around in my pocket, although I occasionally tried. So you could look at this a couple ways. I suppose you could look at all of these posts in a little bit of frustration, because they have very divergent paths in terms of what they suggest. But I think there was a fabulous device for the original poster. You know, who knows whether the answer ultimately will be a change in that individual's habits and how they approach their devices and, and the techniques, or just the device itself, maybe even both. And so that at least there's a lot of uh, a consolidation around two potential ideas the poster can try and hopefully resolve their issue. So anyway, I just thought that was interesting because, this, again, this whole distraction-free um, talking point is often used in the e-ink community, and um, it was interesting to kind of see a dialogue around that and the divergence um, in terms of how people think about distraction-free devices. So that is your post of the week. Okay, I thought we would do something fun and a little different this week. And I wanted to kind of reflect on the progress that e-ink has made since it was introduced uh, as a consumer electronics product over 15 years ago and to where we are today. And this is actually the first of a two-part series. Uh, this is going to focus on looking back when the next part of the series, which I hope to do next week, will focus more on looking forward. 
Um, so we'll have kind of the past and the future in these two segments. But our focus right now is looking at what technologies have really advanced e-ink. And I have developed what I think is the top five most impactful changes in technology that have advanced e-ink from its origins to now. Now, I want to say at the outset that the e-ink technology itself is assumed, so it's not part of the list. So we're talking once e-ink has been established, what are the things that have changed which have really pushed forward um, the, the quality and the impact of these devices? Uh, and as always, I hope that there's a lot of variation of opinion, and I want to hear other people's comments um, down below, because I'm sure that this will be uh, controversial to many of you, but hopefully in a fun way. So we'll start with number five, which is color. Now I know one of the objections to this might be that color on e-ink devices is still very much kind of in the early stages. It really hasn't arrived yet. Um, it's a much more uh, compromised experience if you compare it to you know, other technologies. Um, and so it just isn't there yet. So why is it on the list? Well, the answer for me is I understand that it's a developing technology, but the fact of the matter is the functionality of color exists now and it's a significant improvement in e-ink. So we'll take note-taking as a simple example. So now in note-taking, I can highlight things in color. Um, if I'm doing a PDF, I don't have to mark it in black, I can mark it in red, which makes those markings much more visible. So that functionality alone is apparent, even if the red isn't as good of a shade of red as maybe we'd like. In addition to that, when I go into an e-reader, you can see the, 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 the book covers in, in maybe not the most accurate color, but still in pretty nice color. So the effect of that is present. In other words, yes, color will continue to be an evolving a technology for e-ink, and we all hope that it will get better. But even now, it's still a major improvement in the e-ink technology, and it deserves to be on the list. The question for me is, as the color advances, does this rise up the list? We'll see. Next up on my list is Android. And I know this sounds a little weird, um, because, well, just hear me out. So basically, Android was a massive addition to expanding the functionality of what e-ink devices could do. It's true that a lot of apps that you can get from, say, the Google Play Store won't necessarily work on an e-ink screen, but that doesn't diminish all the things that were added to the e-ink experience, and probably most notably among e-readers. So one of the things that Android makes available is this ability to get an e-reader that not only can do the Amazon Kindle, but can do the Kobo bookstore, that can do Barnes & Noble, that can do Libby, that can do Google Play Books, and on and on. So Android was an incredibly liberating experience in being able to expand what e-ink devices could do. Um, and I see it as a major uh, advancement in the technology. So that becomes my number four technological improvement. Number three, and this one I've actually, I'm a little torn with. I've actually had it even higher on the list, but I've kind of brought it down, um, you know, as, as I've brought a couple other things up, is front lighting. Front lighting is one of those things, it's easy to take that for granted because we got front lighting fairly early in the product cycle of e-readers. But to me, front lighting was the last nail in the coffin of the argument of whether books are superior to e-readers. And I understand that some people still cling to books, and I understand many of the reasons why. But front lighting means that not only do I have a device and I can go to multiple bookstores per Android, as we just discussed, and download those books and have hundreds, maybe even a thousand books on a device at any point in time in a, in a very ergonomic form factor. But now there is no limitation on where I can read. If I'm in outdoors, it's perfect. E-ink is great for that. But even in indoors, where maybe the lighting isn't great, now you've got front lighting. Uh, even for note-taking, front lighting can sometimes be a valuable uh, technology to have. Let's say you're taking notes and you're in a uh, some sort of conference and all the lights are out as they're doing the presentation, you can take notes on your e-ink device thanks 
to the front lighting. So for me, this is a pretty significant uh, technological advancement, and that's why I put it down at number three. Number two, um, and this one I had to think about. I had this much lower in the list, but as I, as I just thought about it more and more, I think the profoundness of that actually kind of sunk in. And this is a touchscreen. Now intuitively, you know, a touchscreen is so innocuous. You know, we have touchscreens on our phones. We have touchscreens on tablets. A lot of computer screens have touchscreens. A lot of refrigerators at the higher end have touchscreens. There's touchscreens everywhere. So it's easy to kind of forget about what the impact of that is. But think about the user interface of your e-ink device and how much that relies on the touchscreen. Um, you know, in the early days of e-readers, a lot of those devices were button laden. I mean, the, one of the original Kindles even had a full keyboard at the bottom because touchscreen technology hadn't come around. So adding touchscreens allowed manufacturers to create their own user interfaces that interact with e-ink uh, more effectively. Uh, to kind of make their products a little more distinguished from competitors' products. It just opened up a lot of things. And it's one of those technologies that's just so easy to forget, but so important to how e-ink devices work today. So that's my number two. Number one, for me, is Wacom. Now, I understand that there are different, uh, you know, different ways of inputting notes. Uh, some of the original note-taking devices, for example, from Sony, had uh, an active stylus that was charged, and, uh, and that's how you interacted. It wasn't with a Wacom layer. But the fact of the matter is the Wacom has been the most dominant technology for e-ink devices. Um, you know, if you're talking books, Remarkable, Big Me, Supernote, they're all using Wacom layers. And why not? You know, unlike those with active um, styluses that require charging that are there have to be used with that device with a uh, Wacom layer, you know, any stylus for the most part will work. So you've got more options, more opportunity. Um, and so clearly Wacom is the is the dominant technology um, as it relates to note taking. So so why though is note taking and Wacom on the top of my list? Well, in my opinion, there are two things that e-note-taking devices do that are superior to that which it's replacing. I alluded earlier that I think reading books um, and reading materials is a far superior experience on e-ink devices, and it's better than reading a book. It's better than reading a printout of a PDF. There, it's just a superior experience to those things. I think note-taking is in the exact same camp. You know, when I first used my uh, note-taking devices a couple of years ago, you know, I, I had notebooks. Uh, I had, every once in a while, I would pull paper out of the drawer of a printer, you know, and take notes there. I would have stickies all over my computers. All those are gone. They're all consolidated into my note-taking device, which I take with me everywhere. So no matter where I'm at, I've got all my notes. I don't have to worry about something that was left in the office because it's with me. If I want to quickly look up to-dos, there's ways to do that. Note-taking and e-reading are the two technologies that I think make e-ink devices uh, far superior to the alternatives. Um, and for that reason, and since Wacom being the dominant version of uh, the note-taking technology, that's why I put uh, Wacom on top. I understand that there are other experiences that people have with e-note taking device or e-devices, rather e-ink devices, that they might think is superior as well. Um, but I tend to think that most other activities you can do are are a little more compromised, and I'll probably talk about that in a in an editorial in a future video. But for sure, the bread and butter of e-ink devices today are reading and note taking, and that's why Wacom. We, we started off with the reading. Wacom was the technology that really advanced uh, these e-ink devices um, in the last few years, and it becomes my number one. So that's my top five list. Um, I thought about it quite a bit, but I'm sure that there'll be a lot of different opinions out there, and I'm looking forward to hearing what those are and what I probably missed. So have those comments, uh, keep those comments coming. And with that, 
That concludes this week's edition of The Shop. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you have any ideas of things you'd like to see covered, um, please put them in the comments below and I'll consider them. Please subscribe. That would be super helpful. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week. Have a great week. Thank you.